Hey everyone, so this will be a quick talk on pheochromocytomas, and I don't want to spend a whole heck of a lot of time talking about this because uh, it's generally, they're generally pretty straightforward on USMLE questions. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the same can't be said about uh, how they are in real life. A lot of times they're misdiagnosed. But for the USMLE purposes, pheochromocytomas are going to be pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and just do a quick overview again of the adrenal diseases. So remember that the adrenal glands are responsible for the production of aldosterone. That's uh, going to be uh, stimulated by angiotensin II and to a lesser degree by ACTH. Uh, cortisol is also re released by the adrenal glands that's stimulated by ACTH. There are various androgens that are stimulated by ACTH and then epinephrine uh, is uh, stimulated by the autonomic nervous system. So pheochromocytoma is a rare epinephrine and norepinephrine secreting tumor of the adrenal medulla and um, it's associated with tachyarrhythmias and sustained or episodic hypertension. So sometimes the reason it can be misdiagnosed is because tachyarrhythmias can lead to cardiac arrest and that can lead to hypotension and so the underlying cause is not discovered because we all associate pheochromocytomas with hypertension. Of course, any tachyarrhythmia, you should uh, have pheochromocytoma in the back of your mind because uh, epinephrine can cause tachyarrhythmia. However, on the USMLE, when you get a question on pheochromocytoma, I can all but guarantee you, you're going to have a patient with headache and severe hypertension. So this is not your garden variety hypertension. This is severe, severe hypertension, particularly in a patient who doesn't have any risk factors for hypertension. So in a 32-year-old woman, non-smoker, healthy, all of a sudden comes into the hospital flushing, sweating, panicky, and has a blood pressure of 190 over 120. That is suspicious for pheochromocytoma. So this isn't 140 over 90. This is 200 over 110 or 190 over 100. Severe hypertension. There are associations of pheochromocytomas with various hereditary neuroendocrine disorders. And some of these disorders are sort of the domain of neurology and some of them are the domain of endocrinology. Uh, but you should be aware that pheochromocytomas can be associated with all of these. They do occur in a higher degree in all of these diseases. And these diseases are von Hippel-Lindau disease, which is a disease that uh, also uh, there will be uh, 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 bleeding in the brain, uh, hemangiomas, uh, neurofibromatosis. Uh, that's the disease, von Recklinghausen's disease, where you'll see uh, cafe LA spots. And then multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A and 2B. Uh, these are diseases where you have pheochromocytoma uh, that is possible. However, you also uh, are at very high risk for uh, medullary th uh, cancer of the thyroid. So just be aware that these neuroendocrine disorders put you at higher risk for pheochromocytoma. And it's always good to rule out pheochromocytoma really in any patient with hypertension because getting a plasma metanephrine is very easy and it's very cheap. But particularly, it's going to be good to rule out pheochromocytoma. It's necessary to rule out pheochromocytoma in a patient that's younger or in any patient that really just doesn't have any risk factors for hypertension. They're young, they don't smoke, uh, they've got a healthy lifestyle, they're not diabetic. Uh, patients who don't have anything that's associated with hypertension. So the symptoms of pheochromocytoma classically are a severe, uh, severe hypertension, as I mentioned, that's characteristic, uh, associated with a severe headache. So this headache is very common. It happens in about 90% of patients. Perspiration, palpitations, abdominal pain, nausea, anxiety, and impending sense of doom, these are all sort of uh, nonspecific symptoms, but they are associated with pheochromocytoma. And there are a lot of associated symptoms. I could have put a whole slide of symptoms that are associated with pheochromocytoma, but they're nonspecific. 
So what you should think when uh, when a patient comes to you when you sh when pheochromocytoma should be at the front of your mind is when you have that healthy younger patient or a patient that's got a history of one of those neuroendocrine disorders um, that has severe hypertension and when I say severe I mean severe hypertension with a severe headache and perhaps possibly on EKG they may have a tachyarrhythmia. On physical exam, uh, a lot of times the patient's going to appear listless, panicked, flushed, uh, sweating, really no different than how a patient may appear if they have hyperthyroidism, which would be something that you'd want to rule out, or if a patient were to have a panic attack. When you are suspecting pheochromocytoma, and you need to you need to rule this out because pheochromocytoma can be deadly if it's not treated uh, promptly. So you need to rule it out. The best initial test when you suspect it is going to be a plasma metanephrine level. That's the most specific as far as plasma tests. Now there are other tests you can do for pheochromocytoma, but this is the best initial test because it's the one you can get the quickest. It is a very highly sensitive test. Gen uh, a normal test is going going to rule out pheochromocytoma completely. Uh, a high level of plasma metanephrines uh, pretty much means you're going to have uh, a diagnosis of pheochromocytoma. However, there are possible false positives. Uh, that should say false positive here, not false negative. Uh, you, there are possible false positives. Certain food uh, can cause false positives, certain drugs. And so, uh, if the patient is stable, uh, it's worth getting urinary metanephrines because they are more stable. And certainly if the urinary metanephrines are elevated, that's an absolute diagnosis. Um, so this is the urinary metanephrines really is more sensitive and spe is more specific, but the best initial test is going to be a plasma metanephrine level. On the test, sometimes you'll have, uh, they'll give you uh, that you have a high urinary level of vanilla mandelic acid, VMA. Um, you certainly, you can order it, but it's not necessary. Um, a high vanilla mandelic acid also is associated with pheochromocytoma. So remember, best initial test, plasma metanephrine level. Um, if it's elevated and the patient's not stable, then you're going to proceed to treatment as if it's a pheochromocytoma. If it's stable, then yes, you can go ahead, get a urinary metanephrine, and confirm your diagnosis. Now, the best treatment is going to be prompt IV therapy, particularly if the patient is unstable. The best initial medical therapy for pheochromocytoma is an alpha blocker, particularly one that's non-selective. You want to block both alpha-1 and alpha-2. So phenoxybenzamine is a good choice. Phentolamine is another good choice. You can use selective alpha blockers, but they tend not to be as good of choices. So on the USMLE, phenoxybenzamine or phentolamine being general alpha blockers are your first therapy, your initial therapy. You do not want to use beta blockers as an initial therapy because you can worsen the hypertension. You can use beta blockers after you've gotten the blood pressure under control to further control your blood pressure, but you, you need to start with alpha blockers. Just remember, alpha comes before beta, just like in the Greek alphabet. And then as far as the best definitive therapy, it's going to be surgical removal. You need to remove the pheochromocytoma. Now, 10%, uh, there's the 10% rule for pheochromocytoma. Remember that 10% are familial, meaning that they're going to be associated with one of those hereditary diseases. 10% are bilateral. Um, and so on. Uh, I don't really find that to be a uh, useful uh, mnemonic for the USMLE, uh, other than that pheochromocytoma can be a hereditary uh, condition. Okay, so once you have the patient under control, you're treating them, you want to get this patient ready for surgery or see if they're even a candidate for surgery. So the, what you're going to do is you're going to image. And you can do various uh, imaging, but CT is generally the go-to uh, imaging test. So, like I said, once you're stable, then you can localize the tumor. But your first step is going to be to stabilize the patient. Uh, you're, you're not going to do any imaging until you have the patient's blood pressure under control. So the best initial test is the CT of the abdomen. However, you may get an MRI. Uh, or you can use nuclear scanning, and that's MIBG, and that's a, a nuclear iodine scan. 
Now, I would say that a CT of the abdomen is the best initial test. MRI would be more specific uh, and more sensitive. Uh, however, if you get, let's say that you get a, uh, a positive pl plasma metanephrine, positive urinary metanephrine, so you know darn well this patient's got a pheochromocytoma, but on CT, you can't find a, uh, a pheochromocytoma then in that case go for the nuclear scanning because it's going to be even more accurate. It's going to be even more sensitive and find that pheochromocytoma. It might be too small, it might uh, be somewhere else uh, outside of the adrenals. Remember 10% are outside of the adrenals. So only go for nuclear scanning if you can't find the pheochromocytoma on CT or MRI. And the nuclear scanning is expensive and it's a pain in the butt. So these are two CTs, uh, one axial and uh, one frontal, uh, of pheochromocytoma. However, they could just as easily be uh, a Wilms tumor or a, um, I suppose maybe not a Wilms tumor, they're kind of small, uh, but they could just as easily be uh, any other adrenal mass. Uh, so uh, here's one right here on the left. Uh, and even the clinician wrote that it's a 3.8 by 3.2 centimeter mass. Uh, generally, pheochromocytomas can get to be pretty big. And then here's another one here on the right. right here. And uh, that's pretty much it for pheochromocytoma. Uh, the USMLE likes to throw a pheochromocytoma question at you, but uh, generally they're pretty straightforward. Just remember, alpha blockers first.